I picked these six by six beams up off Craigslist uh, probably a month and a half, two months ago. Um, I don't know what they were used for, but they're six by six, about 14 to 15 foot long. Um, quarter inch wall, got a flange on that end with some bolt holes in it. Uh, a little bit of angle on one side of them. Other than that, they're just heavy duty beams. Got those. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to build a bridge crane in the garage. I'm going to have a post there where that ladder is going all the way up. And then I'm going to put another post over there near the lift that will go down. And then across the top will be some I-beam that will connect those. And then over here in front of the lift on this side I'm going to go up. And then over here on this corner where the, the air compressor is I'm going to go up all the way to the ceiling. Ceilings for 14 foot I think. Um, I know 12 foot. So over 12 because those, those are 10 foot shelves. So uh, 12 foot, so I'll go up and then I'll put the I-beam, actually I'm going to do the I-beam across them here in front of the garage door. That garage door goes all the way up into the attic. And then I'll go in front of the two post lift at the same height as the two post lift. Maybe. Um, Got to figure that out. But anyway, I'll be putting the bridge crane here and I'll either have the, the beams going front to back or side to side. I prefer side to side. And uh, picked up that steel the other day on Craigslist. So you can see a uh, big heavy I beam, pretty clean. And it's uh, 8 by 6. So I'm going to put those on top of the 6 by 6 posts. Um, and then I'll put a trolley on two of them with. To support the beam that's going across and on the beam that's going across I'll put a trolley on it with a hoist and a motor and all that stuff still got to find it and then I should be able to hoist stuff out of the pickup truck or off the ground or anything like that uh, I was going for a max of a two-ton lift um, stretching it the, it looks like the bridge crane itself is is you know just from looking at what one of these beams will support in the, in the configuration um, you know, I'm seeing five and six tons worth of support these things will take, which is way overkill for what I want to do, which is fine. So then I'll just have to find the block or, you know, the trolleys and, and blocking um, and those type of things to really support this thing. Um, you know, the goal is just to be able to pick up, I'd say a thousand, two thousand pounds would be the most I would ever put on this, a mill or a lathe or something, putting it in the, on a trailer uh, or bringing it off a trailer, maybe something heavier. So anyway, uh, what I've got to do is there's brackets on the top of this thing, these things over here. Let me show you that. So there's these brackets that are on the top, um, and I'm gonna I'm gonna leave these here. So I'll cut the post down towards that end down there, and that will be my bottoms, and these will be the tops. I'll drill new holes um, on the sides here. Right there and right there. I'll, I'll get my mag drill and an annular cutter and drill some new uh, three quarter inch holes or something. And I'll match the holes in the I-beam. You know, I'll drill matching holes in the I-beam and that's how I'll bolt it together instead of welding it together. I figured I'll make this thing to where it bolts together. Uh, it'd be easier just to weld it, but taking it apart, which hopefully I'll never do. I don't know why. I mean, maybe I should just weld this thing together since I don't ever plan on taking it apart. Um, but those will be the tops supporting the eye beams and then the other ones will go the other way, you know. I'll, but I've got to cut some feet for this. So what I've designed is I'm finally cranking out the old plasma table again. And going to cut some stuff. So I was over here. I had some 3 8 plate. Um, I needed about 2 foot by 2 foot, which I've got a little over 2 foot by 2 foot, which is fine. As long as I don't screw any of it up. Uh, this is my plasma table old windows xp machine here but just running mach 3 and sheet cam and all that stuff but i just designed out a little plate that's 12 inches by 12 inches three three nine three quarter inch holes or eight or whatever however many that is um for a five eighths anchor bolt that i'll put in the concrete uh got everything all ready to go just got to get the, the plasma table ready i'm put, i got to put the water in it so this right here is a bladder based plasma table so i'll open up the valve let water in you can see the water's bubbling up i'll fill it all the way to the bottom 
As you can see, the water's old in this thing. It's, it does have the plasma quench type stuff in it that I made myself. Uh, you can see in the back, once I get it kind of close to the surface, I leave it. This plasma table, this, this kind of, ooh, I got some bubbling. Eh, maybe not. Normally, if it gets a little low on water, it'll start bubbling out. But that might be good enough, um, you know, just somewhere close to the surface. And uh, then it, it just holds that there. And then, you know, I'm over here. Uh, plasma torch there. I think I got a 40 amp tip in it. I've also got a spindle and a, and a marker and, you know, stuff like that on it. Just can CNC parts, you know, nothing too crazy. But the big bladder table, that thing warped when I welded it and the bladder, so it just didn't quite turn out how I wanted it, but it's close enough to level. The frame itself is really close, um, and I've got it supported up on stands to where you know, I leveled it out even more with the little stands underneath, but I've got casters I can roll it around if I need to. I just basically put a car jack underneath it and move it up and down. I can store plate underneath it. That's kind of what I did. Cutmaster 101, old plasma cutter now. Um, you know, old stuff still running through parallel ports. Never, I've, I need to go to the Ethernet stepper thing. That's the basic setup. So what I'm going to do is get my ground clamp over here um, off the side of the machine. Need to take it over and ground to the plate. Uh, I'm going to ground on this side right here. So now my hands are wet. Um, and then really, I think the job from here, I'm on 40 amps, pretty good. Yeah, just up the hair. Um, machine's ready to cut. Everything's locked in. This could go real bad because I'm not really uh, even. I've not ran this machine in six or eight months. But uh, you know what? There's nothing like trying it right now. We'll stop this before I try it, and then we'll go. All right. Let's see. It's gonna run. Let's see if it'll pierce. If it won't pierce, I'll have to stop. All right, that's all she wrote, all four cut. Um, you know, I'll let them cool down a little bit. I kind of let the machine cool down a little bit between each one, you know, maybe a minute max. Uh, you know, and I just cut each, I don't ever cut all four parts at the same time. Um, 